last episode was our comeback episode after a long time without posting. We recorded in one day and in the next morning it was already live on YouTube. How is that even possible, Gabriel? Partly because it had been so long since our previous episode, I was just super excited to get back into this. So I cut a little bit in the morning, I stayed up late to finish the episode and then uploaded it the next morning uh, to iTunes and to YouTube. The other part of that though, the, the thing that really made it possible, apart from my enthusiasm, is our workflow, which we've built up over the last six to 12 months. And there are really four, four main pieces to this. Uh, the first thing is you need some sort of network attached storage that could be either a Synology NAS, a QNAP, or perhaps a Jellyfish. Uh, the next thing you need is Kino, and we have a whole other episode, uh, episode dedicated to Kino. So if you'd like to learn more about that, check out our episode a few, a few episodes back. The next component, and this is a big one, is PostLab. And then from there, it's Final Cut Pro 10, which of course we use and have been using for years. So let's start with the network attached storage. Now, maybe a year ago or so, I purchased um, under your tutelage, a uh, Synology 1817 NAS and I added, I maxed out the RAM and I had no idea how to set that up. Can you explain to the audience as simply as possible <laughs> how to set up a shared storage unit? Because I know in your case, you, you ended up with the QNAP, right? Yeah. So we have different, you know, manufacturer devices, but they are still working together. Now, somebody who knows nothing about this, like I, like me, how would you explain that to them in the simplest yeah. terms possible? So, yeah, the the very first thing is like because we are in different vendors, we have to look for a either open source or uh, an application that is supported on both NASs. So I decided to go with a, a protocol that is natively supported on both NASs. That is the Web Dev protocol, and one of the NASs, in this case mine, the QNAP, will act as the server and the other one will act as a client. The client will be checking the server if there are any changes. So uh, here on my QNAP, uh, there are three things that I need to do. I need to create a user for my client, you, to connect to, and I need to give permissions to that user and I need to set up the server. So if we're going to check here, we have the user, Gabriel, okay, check, created. Now, shared folders. We create a shared folder on my NAS and on your NAS with the same exact name, get a grip. Mm -hmm. And this is very important because later on Final Cut Pro 10 we'll be looking for the absolute path of the media. So it's looking for the volume name. So I have here a volume called get a grip and when I look into the permissions, me and you have permissions to read and write on that on that uh, volume. So number two, check. And number three, we need to activate the server part of the NAS. And if I come here to applications, web server, and then web dev, I need to just click on enable web dev, choose shared folder permissions. So we are using the permissions that are on the shared folder. And then there is the port in which you're gonna access that, uh, that web dev. And that's it on the server side. Now, on the client side here on the Synology, we have, uh, first of all, we also have a username for me and a username for you, of course. We have the shared folder here, get a grip, same thing as before. And as a client application, we're gonna use an application from Synology called Cloud Sync. We already have it installed, here it is, Cloud Sync. And when I open Cloud Sync, I can see that I already have configured here, but if you would be curious on how to do, uh, CloudSync can connect to a lot of different cloud providers, including the web dev protocol that we are using here. Uh, once you click on next, you're gonna have server address. That's gonna be the address for my server, user account and password. And after that, you're gonna have option to do a bi-directional synchronization. Now, of course, there are a few more uh, small details in that setup and that can vary from person to person, from server to server. So if you're interested in uh, setting up collaboration, multiple people in different locations, different NASs, you can just feel free to reach out. I do that as a consultant um, job. So if you want to do that, you can just reach out to me. Uh, now at this point, 
the NAS from Gabe is connected to mine. We can see here the latest uh, history stuff that happened and they are in sync. So if we go into Finder and open the GetAgrip folder, here it is my folder. And Gabriel, your, if you open your GetAgrip folder, they're both identical, correct? Yes, um, so I see 01 projects, 02 assets, 03 episode media, and 04 completed episodes. Now let's do a quick test real quick. Yeah. Can you maybe add a file to the root of this folder, just so we can show people how uh, this is working pretty much real time? Absolutely, so let me just go to assets. I will go to graphics, how about the image library, and let's just take the Final Cut Pro 10 logo. I'm going to copy that and paste that into the root level of our folder. So Command V to paste that. And let me know when you see that appear. And now looking back on my screen, we're going to see the file appearing. And there it is, Final Cut Pro X.png. And I can preview that file. There it is. And if you do the opposite, if you get rid of that file. Let me just select that and delete it. And then one, two, three, four, and it's gone. And I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in, in the US, and you are in Prague in the Czech Republic. We are six, yeah. six hours apart in time zone and I don't know how many thousand miles apart. Now, yes, that was just a logo and it was a tiny file, but yes, it works for any size file. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, and, and then of course, one thing that's worth noticing here is we originated these actions on Gabriel's machine because his NAS is the one that's the client. His NAS is actively looking for changes on the server and locally. Because those changes happen locally, it's immediate action that that application will reflect and send it to the server. If I would have done here, it would take a little longer because there is a polling period in which that application is checking for changes on the server. So it's probably either one minute or every five minutes, depends on the setting. I don't remember how many minutes we have set at the moment, but that's why we showed from Gabriel's side to my side, just so you see the synchronization working. And what are all of the advantages of us, of me, for example, being able to drop whatever I want into those folders and walk away and know that you will instantly have the same file? Well, the, the, the biggest advantage here, very, first of all, is like we are using a, a network attached storage. So this is pretty much a server. It's not a dumb hard drive that needs a computer to do anything. So it's actually very important that we think about once we drop a file there, there is a server that's working on making sure that the synchronization is going to happen. So yeah. that's one of the reasons why I suggested you getting a, a, a NAS instead of a big RAID, because you already have fast drives that you use to uh, edit. Mm -hmm. So you didn't really need to, to edit from the NAS. But even if you wanted, you could. I do for mine. Yeah. Um, but this is a huge advantage that we can, uh, for example, when we record, right now it's 10.30 in the evening here, I'm going to import my media to, to the folder and I can go to sleep. And in, in about an hour or two, Gabriel is going to have the footage on his NAS. And mm -hmm. it's, if it's still part of his day and he wants to edit, he can start editing, for example. Well, and the other really nice thing about us having the same folder structure the same folder name and this oh, comes in this, to get to. this come yes this comes into play <laughs> with both kino and post lab which we'll get into yeah. in more detail shortly is that any changes we make either in kino or post lab on either end will automatically ripple through to the other person yes which brings me to oh. our setups so yeah we shot uh, sort of demo episode just so we could you know, have some footage to work with here. And on your end, you're shooting with a Panasonic GH5. I'm shooting with a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Um, you have your media that you'll walk us through ingest and metadata. On my end, let me just say that I was recording DCI 4K. It was way bigger in file size and resolution than we actually needed. So I brought that file into Final Cut Pro 10 synced the audio. Color and in ProRes. 
and in ProRes, in ProRes yeah, it was as well. Huge. Yeah. It was like 22 gigabytes. Um, and so I synced the audio, added a quick color correction, spat that out as an H.264. So let's go back to you and how you get that media into Kino. And then from there, what you do with it. All right. So here on Kino, I have my Get a Grip volume that has those folders that we already showed you on Finder. And we have our episode media folder. Now, let's start by continuing this collaboration thing. Gabriel, can you create a folder inside episode media where I can drop my, my files to? Uh, I think we're going to have an, a folder for episode demo. Okay, so I am in the episode media. I will create a new folder with the date of 722 uh, episode demo. So this will serve as the top level folder for all the media that we <laughs> are sharing. <laughs> And pretty much the folder is already here for me. So it, it, had, it had no delay. There is no almost no data to be sent, right? So I have that folder here. I'm going to connect my memory card reader to my computer. And Kino will immediately move my view to the card reader. And we can see here there is my original file name. And there is no metadata. What I normally do is... I First of all, I rename my file here because it's contained into just one file so it's not a big problem it's not like a sony camera that has a bunch of extra files if this would be a sony camera i would not do this i would not do this renaming and r any raw except prores raw i wouldn't do that either because they have sidecar files and folder structures and stuff like that uh, that's a we already mentioned that in, in other episodes yeah. so i'm going to create here a file name that will be just uh episode demo Felipe, and you can see here that Kino, uh, I'm using a file name pattern. So it already gives me, it puts uh, the date in which was recorded here and an index in the end because that's the way I have set. So I renamed that. And second thing is I will add a metadata, um, a metadata preset that I already created before and I have here. And you can see that adds all of this information into my description. I go inside it and I change what I need to change. Okay, now I have all of that metadata that I added. But if you notice, I've done all of that on the memory card. And the reason for that is if I ever need to go back to this memory card and I haven't formatted, that information is there and it's not only just in the destination. Now, other thing that I can do here is I could do a checksummed copy to a destination, uh, but in this case, just to make things a little simpler, I'm just gonna do a normal copy to my movies folder. And you're not saying that I'm copying to my movies folder and not the get a grip folder. Uh, the reason for that is because this file is 4.1 gigabytes and is in 4K. And between Gabriel and I for our YouTube channel, we are editing everything in 1080p. So what I will do is I will compress this video file and to a smaller size. So I'm going to come here to convert. I'm going to go into distribution H.264 1080p. And I will do a couple of changes here on this. Uh, first of all, I want this to be quality based and I will put here to 80%. I've tested this before, so I know that this is something that's going to be good enough. I don't need any LUTs, I don't need any filters, I don't need any overlays, okay. And the encode, I will make sure that I'm keeping the original sound of my video. And where I want to send this to is to the same folder as the original, just with a different name. I'm going to click on start. So now Kino is transcoding this file and you see here that's actually going to be quite quick. Just in three minutes, I'm going to have compressed this from 4K to 1080p. So I just, we can just speed up through this process. In the meantime, so I'll, as I said, I've already compressed my file and it is currently on my desktop though. It's not yet on the NAS, so Felipe can't have it. So I brought my file into Kino. I've added some metadata as well. And I'm gonna go to File, uh, Copy and Verify. I'm going to select my destination, choose a folder, go to Get a Grip, Episode Media, and Episode Demo. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that Kino is writing a sidecar file. And on the finder level, if I just drag the file over, it'll miss the sidecar file. So right now, it's Kino's not just going to copy and verify 
the video file, it's going to bring the folder that encloses the video file, and that's how it's going to bring the sidecar along with it. So let me choose open, and then copy and verify. And then if I switch back over to Finder, <clears throat> you now see that folder from my desktop that contains the video file with the metadata that's got uh, with the metadata, uh, which is all contained inside this sidecar file. It looks like a MHL file. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, the MHL media hash is list. the media hash list. Yes. Okay, so on my end, it looks that it looks like everything is correct. Now, do we know that you will be able to see this metadata on Kino in your end, being that? We both have, we're both sharing the same folder. Yeah, it's not, it's not only because we're sharing the same folder, but um, because your NAS is transferring everything to here. So when it's transferring your video file, it's transferring the sidecar that comes with it. And that, that's the sidecar that Kino is going to read. Now, on my end, you see here that my transcode finished, and you see the cool thing about, about Kino is that when you transcode, it actually keeps the same metadata from the original file. So my compressed file has the same metadata, and you see here the original file was 4.1 gigabytes, mm -hmm. and the compressed one 493 megabytes, so uh, fairly smaller. Okay, so now it's my turn. I'm going to do a copy and verify, which is right here. And I will select what it is that I want to copy. Uh, now, the copy and verify is copying from a folder level or a volume level. Uh, I have these files here on my movies folder, uh, but they're not in any specific folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a quick folder here uh, that's going to be 2019-07-22 um, episode demo Felipe. So that's the name of the folder, and I'm going to put my files, just going to move them inside there. And now I can do a copy and verify of this folder. There it is, the folder. And where it should go to, it should go to Episode Media. Episode Media. Episode Demo. And the name of the actual backup folder that's going to be inside. For me, it's going to be just Felipe. And how big of a file the copy now. is your video 493 file? megabytes. Okay. Um, 493 megabytes on video and, and 49 megabytes on the audio. Now, at this point, that you copied and verified your files to the NAS on the synced folder, and I did the same, if we go back to your NAS here, we're going to take a look at what's going on. I'm going to go here into history and I'm going to see what were the latest actions that were taken uh, by, by your NAS. So we can see here that your NAS uploaded the sidecar file, it uploaded the media hash list and uploaded the video file and it downloaded from my side my folder, but it hasn't downloaded my video yet. So you, this client application, this cloud sync will check very soon and it's checking right now and now it figured out that there are two new files there is my WAV file and there is my video file so let's verify that I actually have your video here so if I just refresh my list there it is we can see Gabriel's video it has the description BMPCC 4k it's a very small file no name camera name, HD 24P, H264, episode demo. Um, he didn't put any scene. So let's do a quick test here. Gabriel, can you add a scene name uh, for for your file? Yes, and, and real quick, uh, in the finder, I saw your audio file appear and simultaneously saw it appear in Kino. So those are both reading the file as it comes in. Uh, it wasn't there before, yes. which is great, which is wonderful. So uh, I will click on my yeah, file. And they're still being transferred. Yeah, they're not done yet, but they're, it's recognizing that a file is coming through. Uh, what sort of metadata would you like on my video? Uh, scene. Uh, let's put, uh, put a scene called episode demo. Okay. Okay, so if I refresh here, refresh once, refresh twice, there it is. Episode demo, it appeared in my metadata on Kino done. That's all you need to know so far about our 
media management using NAS and Kino. Yeah, and argue, arguably, we don't need to be populating these fields with metadata for our Get a Grip episodes because it's just the two of us. There's only four files normally. Yeah, but you can imagine that if you're a bigger company and you're adding a lot of, let's say that you're uh, covering an event yeah. and you're recording 24 hours a day or I don't know. 18 hours a day and you're ingesting things all the time and there is a DIT and the DIT is importing with Kino and putting metadata and that folder is synchronized with the with the main office the main office is getting the files and is getting the metadata as they come and then uh, the editor for example what if I was using Final Cut Pro 10 and you were using God forbid Premiere Pro Premiere and Final Cut will both import metadata from Kino and so just having that sidecar file, um, I could be logging footage and assigning this metadata and somebody with Premiere could also be accessing the same file and using it. They don't have to be stuck with our Final Cut workflow or, you know, wh whether you, no matter which NL you're using, if you had to revisit this project on the road or, you know, you've got episodic material that you have to reuse the old media, you can continue going into Kino and searching that metadata and your whole team provided they're all, you know, they have that same SharePoint with the, with the network, um, we'll have all that metadata with them. So And you can do key, uh, keyword ranges on, on Kino, you can do favorites on Kino, so you could have people that are not even using Final Cut creating all of those things for you to be edited later on. Now, we are done with the media, so then what? So I now see your video file, audio file, and your media hash list file. And I've got my media. Now, do you see all those files as well? There should be two files in I my folder. I see those files as well. All right, so we are good to go. Um, we already mentioned that, I believe we mentioned that when we edit in Final Cut, Final Cut Pro will point to other types of media. Um, there are a bunch of assets that we use in every episode, say the intro animation, lower thirds, sound effects, things like that. Uh, that's all in this assets folder on for me on the Synology and for you on the QNAP. And so whenever we have a library created, it automatically points to that media. And so if you were to use the same library, which we'll get to in a second, you won't have to relink, it'll point to that. And I should mention that we, we do separately have motion templates. There are certain animations that I didn't pre-render, things that we have to customize, where that is in your motion templates folder on your computer and mine are on mine. But those don't really have to load. Those automatically load with the movies folder. So no relinking necessary. So we have a combination of motion templates, pre-populated media that's always in the assets folder, plus this media that we shoot each episode, which is what we're dealing with right now. But before, we're, before we get into Final Cut, we need some way of both being able to use that same Final Cut library. <clears throat> and you cannot do that by default. There is currently no native collaboration in Final Cut Pro 10 but we do have PostLab. And Felipe, you've been working on that for quite a while. So how yep. would you present PostLab to us? PostLab is basically an application to manage Final Cut Pro 10 libraries. Okay. That's, that's on a top level, that's what it is. But then once you're managing those Final Cut Pro 10 libraries, you're keeping track of versions of the libraries and you're also being able to share with other people. So here I have PostLab. And we, I have a team called Get a Grip, and I have an, a project called Episode 30. So I'm going to create a new project for this one that we're going to show you, and I'm going to call it Episode Collaboration. And I'm going to click, click, click on Create. Now PostLab is going to create that project locally, and it's going to create that project in the server. And it's going to make sure that those projects are absolutely in sync. And it's in this project that I'm going to create the Final Cut Pro 10 library. Now that the project has been opened here, the next step is to create the library. I'm going to click on plus, empty library. I'm going to give it a name. And because we want to always start the edit from a specific point in time as uh, the configuration of the library, we want to have all the assets that we're going to use, lower thirds, all the animations there, I'm going to use a template. And we already created this Get a Grip template here that has all the media uh, pointing at our Get a Grip uh, drive. So right now I click on Save and PostLab is creating that library on the cloud and locally. So here it is, master library. And if I click on it, 
it has here the history, the library has been created and now it's ready to be edited. Now, since I'm already here, I'm gonna click on start editing. So now Final Cut opened that library and as I mentioned, here it is all the media that we already have that's referenced in, in our volume that Gabriel and I have. So it has music, it has lower thirds, it has backgrounds, it has animations, it has everything under our template media here. And media is where we're gonna put our stuff, projects where we're gonna create our projects. So I'm gonna go into Kino, I'm going to get a grip, episode media, I'm gonna select all of those, right click, send to Final Cut, I want to select the library on Final Cut. I want it sent to the event called Media, Live in Place, and all of this stuff here will be sent together. Sent to Final Cut Pro 10. I select which library it imports to. Now the media is there. I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm gonna get my video and audio. I'm gonna put the audio role as Felipe. So that's one thing that's also an advantage here is because uh, audio roles, if they have been configured in advance, they travel with the, with, with the library. So we already have these roles that we always use here. And I'm gonna create a role for Gabriel, not create, but assign the, the role for Gabriel for audio and video. Uh, I'm gonna synchronize my uh, audio and video here. Now it, I have my synchronized clip. I can just reject this, I have this too. I will create a multicam, and the thing is, this multicam is not gonna work. <laughs> the reason for that is because we don't have a file that has both of our audios, and we don't have a mix down. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot to record on Skype, so when I go here into multicam, um, it's really not in sync. So, honestly, I don't wanna deal with that, so I'm gonna send it to Gabriel. So I'm gonna go back here to PostLab, I'm gonna click on check for changes. I'm gonna add my comment. I'm gonna say imported to media, but the multicam needs work. And I'm gonna click on upload. Okay, preparing media. I'm gonna see here, PostLab closed the library on Final Cut. And now it's uploading the library, it's there. Now, if Gabriel, if you go and open that project collaboration and go into the master library, you should be able to see my latest update. And I exactly see that. Imported the media, but the multicam needs work. So uh, with the library closed on your end, which I know because in order for these comments to show up, it would have automatically closed on your end. I'm going to yes. click start editing. Now, one thing before you start editing, because now you have the library open on your final cut, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to show them one quick thing. Yeah. Because now Gabriel started editing, if I refresh here my view of that library, I'm going to actually see that this library is locked and is locked by Gabriel on Studio One. He locked at this time of his day, that's his local time. And here appears on the history, Gabriel Spotting started working on this library. So I know that there is someone or working on the library right now. Excellent. So I've got the multicam and it looks like you created your, yep, your sync clip with your audio, and then we've got my audio, and I believe you clapped before me. This is gonna be tricky because I can't hear any of this audio because I've only got you on here. But <laughs> let's just, we, we, can, we can pretend. So let's just say that's my clap, boom, boom. It's fine, I'll put a little marker there. And then where's your clap? That's this. I think it clapped right after you, I guess. Yeah, there you are. Boom. And then there will be the moments Marker. that I'm in silence and you're talking, that you're so, talking and I'm in silence. Let me just pretend that our claps were synced. So in reality, if I open the angle viewer, you know, you'll see us doing our thing. It won't make any sense, but for the purposes of this demo, uh, we're good to go. So what I'm going to do now is create a new project. We'll call this 2019 07-22 episode collaboration 24p hd sounds good okay drop the multi-cam clip into the timeline and i'll just scrub through let's pretend this is interesting stuff i'll trim that out i can go to our template media and look for uh i believe it was repeated assets 
and uh, let me just look at what's going on here and we've got opening title sequence so I'm going to drop that into the beginning and let me just close this angle viewer and Felipe you should be ready to go okay I'm going to refresh my view here to see what are the lat latest changes that I have for this library and here we have, I pretend to cut this, it still needs color and talent. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to click on start editing. Let's, let's do it here. And you're going to notice one thing. Remember where the playhead was when Gabriel decided to send it to PostLab? It, the playhead is exactly in the same place. So it opened exactly the project that Gabe was working on. Playhead is exactly in the same place. So it, it needs a lot more work than he's leading us to believe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send it to you at like 10.30 in the evening and say, almost finished, and you're going to open it and see there's like an hour left to cut. <laughs> so, uh, okay, let's, let's do... Let's really help him and make something very beautiful here. We're gonna do highlights um, in my what in is my the hair. Order? No. I'm gonna do highlights uh, teal. I'm gonna do shadows teal <laughs> and midtones orange. Yeah, it's very ugly. So we see that I don't have a lot of talent to to color grade, right? Ah, but you know what? It's it it doesn't look that bad. My crew block in there. Oh, it's not micro blocking, it's actually your sound panels, they look like... <laughs> uh, yeah, there is a lot of information there. Uh, okay, I did his video, I'm gonna do my video. And Gabriel doesn't know this, but I'm actually doing that on, uh, on the multicam, because we both had completely different uh, videos. And I'm gonna use here a preset that I created yesterday. No, I created on a different computer yesterday, so I'm going to use none of these presets. I'm going to have to do this by hand, so let's do that. Let's just do this, and this, and this, and this. Okay, my color is ready, and let's continue doing a little bit more work here. Um, let's take a look at... Oh, where's my audio? Oh, he didn't add both of our audios to the multicam. Look at that. He doesn't want to hear me. Okay, let's add me as well. Okay, we can actually see that he did a half decent job with the syncing. You can see that I'm talking and then he talks and then I talk and then he talks. Okay. All right, let's pretend that I am cutting this. So I am angle two. Actually, this should be angle one. This should be angle two. I don't know. I'm tired of editing this. Gabriel has a lot more patience than me. Okay, Gabriel, I think I'm finished with the video. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to let PostLab double check what's on with my library. And I'm going to now add my comments. Did a terrific, terrific job of creating this masterpiece. And now you can imagine that this could go on forever and ever and ever, handing over to each other. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning here is that what if we wanted to work at the same time? If we wanted to work at the same time, what I would do is, okay, we have a library where we started things from and we have all the media. So maybe you're an assistant editor, you created a library and you imported everything and then you're going to send off to, a, a, to an editor. What you would do is you just select this library, you'd come here to the gear, duplicate library, and I'm going to create one here for Gabriel, for example. I'm going to give Gabriel's name on this library and I'm going to hit on save and then this library will be a perfect replica of the master library at this point in time. So now that this Gabriel library exists, Gabriel, on your post lab, if you do command R to refresh, you're going to see a library called Gabriel. All right, so sure enough, I see this new library with my name on it. I'm going to download that. So now I'm going to click start editing. That has opened inside Final Cut, and this footage looks horrendous. Okay, so <laughs> I, 
I'm not sure what you want me to do with this, but let's just say I do, let me just zoom in. Let's just say I uh, cut this out. I trim that down, made this one shorter. I shuffled this piece and we'll mark that. We'll add a title over there and we'll call this so I added a nice title in there for you. <laughs> and then I'm going to duplicate this project, Command D, and let's just call it Gabe's, oops, Ugh. can't type today. And then we'll go back to PostLab, and I will say Gabe Felipe a title and Okay, at the same time that Gabriel is adding his comment to uploading his library, I could be working here on the master library. So I, well, what could I be doing on this master library? So let, let's recap what we have. We have um, projects. Uh, so the project that he created, he didn't create inside the projects event. So I'm going to start cleaning up things a little bit. I'm going to put that inside the projects uh, event. So then we have media in the media folder. We have the template media, my projects here. Well, I didn't cut much of it, uh, but at this point, Gabriel just sent me a message or actually he let me know that uh, his version two is ready. And I wanted to make sure uh, his version two is part of the master library as well. So we don't have everything spread around. So what I have is my master library open. I'm gonna go back to PostLab. I will go into Gabriel's library. And now I see here, gave Felipe a title and a duplicate project. So I'm gonna open a read-only version of his library because I don't want to edit his library. And here we have Gabe's duplicate. And I can just drag and drop to my projects here on the master library. Click OK here. You see that it doesn't bring any media because that media already exists on my library. And I can close his read-only. Now I have his version here as he's just showed you. So that's pretty much it. Now I can, if I finish this, I can come back to my master library on PostLab here and say, this project is finished, upload. And I can even set a status of the library up here and give it a little um, color there and saying that this is completed and it's gonna appear here in the list. And that's pretty much it. This way you can go back and forth between two different people that are in two different places. Uh, and we went from managing our media, synchronizing our media across locations to adding metadata that both of us can see, both of us can edit, and it ref reflects on both of our systems. And then using PostLab to manage the library. Working with Kino and PostLab is leaps and bounds easier than trying to set up your NAS. So really, once you get that, <laughs> well, right? I mean, when, once you get that set up, you can share your files, you've got Kino, which is really easy to figure out, and then you've got PostLab, which is in still in progress, but it's getting better all the time. And uh, lately it's been, it's been really stable. And then from there you've got Final Cut in our case, or Premiere or DaVinci. Um, I think the workflow is, Phenomenal, and we've saved so much time, uh, mostly because of PostLab. Now, if you're interested in Kino, you can go to www.lesspainsoftware.com. And where would you learn about PostLab, Felipe? Uh, you can go to hedge.video, or you can send an email to postlab at hedge.video to get more information. And we. And PostLab will actually have a publicly a public release very soon, most likely during IBC. So you guys can uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, follow Hedge or PostLab accounts on Twitter, and uh, that's pretty much it. That's it. It, it makes everything looks very easy, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there again, there are some important steps along the way, but once you've got that yes. infrastructure set up, the workflow is just so easy and fluid. It's it's really great. I hope you guys liked this. Uh, I hope this will be useful for you somehow. And again, if you want to have more information, leave a comment, reach out. Uh, I'm on Twitter, at Bias Felipe. 
Um, and uh, if you want me to help you out setting up something like that, uh, I can do a consultant job for you. And that's it. Awesome. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.